Find the value of y if a linear function goes through the following points and has the following slope. So here's one point, here's another point, and here's the slope. All right, so basically, how are two points and the slope related? Well, they're related via this equation, right? That the slope of a linear line is equal to the change in y over the change in x, right? AKA, this is y2 minus y1 all divided by x2 minus x1. So if I know two points, x and y2, x and y1, then I can find the slope, right? Conversely, if I know the slope, and I know three of these four things, let's just say, I can solve for the missing piece, right? Anytime you have an equation and you have one unknown, you can always solve for that unknown. So part of the strategy here is to, is to realize that, that that is the case, right? Let's move this down ever so slightly. So notice here, this is a coordinate. Now coordinates are always written, right? X comma Y. Now let me call this my first coordinate. So I'll put a little one at the bottom. And let me call this then my second coordinate. Now notice, I can plug in these values into my slope equation. So Y2 I define to be 100. And actually, you know what? Let me just organize this a little better. So let me actually move this on out. All right. And then I'm just going to bring this on over. So here's my formula. Okay. Now, what's the slope? The slope is negative 5. They told us that, right? It's right there. So M is negative 5. What's Y2? I defined it as 100. What's Y1? Well, I defined that as my unknown Y. So just plug in Y. What's X2? Well, that's 25. And then what's x1 minus? Well, that's 10. So here is an equation with only one known. This is beautiful because this is something we can solve. All right. So let's do it. So first, we're going to cross multiply basically, right? So it's going to be negative 5 times, one second, negative 5 times 25. Well, I should have combined that first, right? You silly goose. So this is negative 5 is equal to 100 minus y all over 15. And now why don't we cross multiply? So negative 5 times 15, that's going to be negative 75. And then the 1 times 10, 100 minus y is just 100 minus y. So now we want to solve for the y. I notice it's negative, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it on over to the left-hand side. Okay. And then what I'm going to do at the same time is I'm going to add this now on over to the right-hand side and combine it with the 100, right? So when I do that, I get now y will be equal to 175. Oh, and look at that. I found out what y is. So I know that point. I know that coordinate, okay? And guess what? It says find the value of y. That's it. What you could do now if you wanted to, you could also find the equation of the uh, linear line here. You know what? Even though the question doesn't ask for it, why don't we do it, right? Why don't we just do it? So y is equal to mx plus b. Now, if I know, now remember, this equation tells us that in order to fully describe a linear function, we need to know the slope and we need to know the y-intercept. So we do know the slope, we just found it. But we don't know the y-intercept. Hmm. So that's what we got to do. Right, so take a look. This is an equation. And if I want to find B, that means I better know these three things, okay? I know the slope, that's going to be 175. And then what does Y and X represent? They just represent a point on the line. That's it. They represent a certain point. So they gave us two points. Now, one we had to calculate the Y value of, but we know it, so we could plug it in. However, I'd suggest you don't do that. All right, the only reason why is because maybe we made a mistake here, all right? And we don't want that mistake to then propagate into the second part of the question. So why don't you choose this one that was given? There's less likelihood that you make a mistake, all right? So let's plug in the y value of 100. Let's plug in the m value then of 175. Let's plug in that x value of 25 now, and then plus b. And now notice we can solve this, right? So this is 100. That's going to equal, so this is now 175 times 25. So that works out to be 4,375 plus B. And then just subtract this value on over to the left-hand side. What do we get? We're basically going to get negative 4,275 
and that's equal to b. And now we have all the pieces we need to write down this linear equation. So the equation would be y would equal the slope value of 175 times the x value minus then 4,275. Look at that. Wunderbar. Guys, thanks for tuning in. All right, I really do hope this helped. And, you know, even though we didn't have to do the second part, right, why not? It's just extra practice. You want to think about how can these problems change? What else could they ask me with this given information? If you keep questioning uh, in that way and you keep asking yourself those questions, you try to generate those questions for yourself, you're definitely on the right track to doing really, really well, not only in math, but in other subjects. And, you know, part of this is just all problem solving. All right, and Basically, throughout life, you're going to be solving a whole bunch of problems. So it's a very useful skill. All right. So, guys, thanks for tuning in. If you found this video helpful, please help us out by subscribing. Tell your friends, too. That's actually the best way to help. And uh, check out more of our videos. We've, we've got a ton of stuff coming out to you, and we might have done some other problems that you're looking for. Take care.